A war rages between the witches and the remnants of humanity ruled by the church. In a distant territory controlled by one of the witches, papal scouts have discovered a wreckage of a ship that had been lost for several centuries. It carried a valuable artifact, one that could alter the course of the conflict. To recover it, the Vatican has dispatched one of its best witch hunters. Only he can face the witch by means of his powerful magic. Hunters like him are called prayers, and the substance running through his veins that gives him arcane powers is known as witch fire. When you reach your destination, you're completely exhausted. There's very little witch fire left in your blood. One of the first things you must do is replenish your powers. The fastest way to do it is to fight the witch's minions, ghouls and wraiths. Once they're dead, the witch fire they were made of will be yours. However, this won't be an easy prey. The world of witch fire is a place where everything is trying to kill you. Monsters prowl the area, treasure chests turn out to be deadly traps, and lethal contraptions stay hidden from view. If you waste bullets, ignore your stamina, and take your opponents for granted, you will die. And this can happen in a myriad more ways. Getting killed means that you lose all your loot, although it's possible to recover it, and the monsters you've eliminated come back from the dead. What's even worse, once the witch senses the powerful intruder who hasn't died so far, she will start throwing deadly curses at you called the Calamities. These can raise the dead from their graves or conjure a fog to unleash a hunt for your soul. She will stop at nothing to drive you out of her realm. And if this doesn't work and you still brazenly cling to life, amassing more power and a greater arsenal, then the witch will dispatch new types of minions and set traps the likes of which you have not seen. The world will change, adapting to your progress. This means more witch fire to collect, but also more challenges to conquer. You find refuge in an old hermitage, enveloped in a fog that hides you from the witch's sight. From here, you will venture into her domain, trying to find the villain's lair. An enchanted mirror allows you to receive amazing inventions from the Vatican's gunsmiths. Here, you can also transform the witch fire collected along the way into skills that become more and more powerful. This transformation does more than simply make you stronger. You also gain understanding of how magic works. Without this knowledge, many places remain inaccessible, and many magical objects are nothing more than a piece of paper with strange scribblings or a simple shard of iron. Let's examine this weapon made for the prayer in the Vatican workshop. If you're unable to see through its esoteric shroud, it looks like a regular rifle. The more witch fire courses through your veins, the more secrets reveal themselves to you. For instance, it turns out that the aforementioned rifle can hit several enemies with a single shot. This is how things are in this world. Where common folk see nothing but a regular weapon, a seal with strange symbols, or a beautiful ring. A prayer recognizes brutally effective tools of death, spells based on one of the four elements, or magical signets that allow him to use telekinesis or teleportation. The prayer's task is simple. Kill the witch and recover the artifact she stole. However, simple doesn't mean easy. Luckily for you, the prayer has more tools at his disposal than superhuman powers or a magical arsenal. Some of these implements are called the Arcana. Crystals that are created from witch fire in the most magic-infused spots allow the prayer to alter reality, if ever so slightly. Will you enhance your spells with new abilities, weaken all of the witch's minions, or perhaps you will prefer to improve your shooting skills for a short while? Still, the most powerful force the prayer can wield is not a weapon, a spell, 
a magical object, or even the arcana. It's the freedom. When you embark on your journey, you set your own goals. Would you like to find and defeat the guard keeping watch over the witch's keys? Go right ahead. Or perhaps you prefer to steal some gold and return to the hermitage. No problem. Why don't you test a new weapon and collect enough witch fire to develop another skill? There's nothing stopping you. Every step you make during your journey marks a choice. You can rush into a huge mob of enemies and try to execute them in a frenzied dance of death. Or opt for eliminating them one by one from afar. Steering clear from a fight is an option. As is provoking more fights for bigger rewards. This freedom means that there isn't just one correct method to defeat the witch. The prayer is not bound by time restrictions, and the Vatican doesn't care what methods he employs. A sharpshooter's agile fingers, a tactician's analytical mind, or special powers and magical objects, you can pick, choose, and match freely to achieve your goal. These are the bare bones of Witchfire. Discovering the rest is up to you. But here's a final thought. The witch knows that the prayers are immortal. Her goal is not to kill you. Her goal is to take away your belief that she can be defeated. When faced with hardship, you decide whether to give in to despair or get back on your feet and resume the fight. Godspeed, prayer.